All right, we're going to continue our discussion of forces by talking about friction. Friction is a force that opposes the relative motion between two surfaces. So, friction is the thing that keeps things from sliding. Friction is the thing that happens with sliding, okay? Um, it's what keeps things from sliding continuously well. So, the reason we have friction we have on, on a very microscopic level between two surfaces we have a roughness between surfaces any surface you can think of at a, at a small enough at a microscopic or, or even just a tiny level there's 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 roughness between those surfaces and it you know, when those two surfaces move across each other, it's like moving sandpaper over sandpaper or Velcro over Velcro. It's, it's rough. It gets in the way. You have to push to overcome that. Now, we're all familiar with the kind of friction that you get when you slide a book across a table. That is called kinetic friction. Kinetic friction is what you get um, when the surfaces are moving. Very familiar. The other kind of friction that we have is called static friction. With static friction, the surfaces don't move at all. So, to give an example, and we won't calculate anything really, but let's say we have a block of mass M and I push on it with a force F. And there's a tiny frictional force behind it. If I actually make this block move and it accelerates, we get a velocity in that direction, it's sliding across the surface. That's kinetic friction. With static friction, take a block of mass M. If I push on it with a force of F and friction pushes back with the same force, I don't make the block move. It's stuck. It's frozen in place. Let's write that down for static friction. Object is frozen in place. Okay. If I don't push stronger than static friction, the object's not going to move. These are the basics on friction. So we're going to look first at static friction. So let's look at a little scenario. Ten kilogram block has a maximum static friction of sixty newtons. So, what's going to happen in each of these three scenarios? What happens when scenario one? no force is added to the object. Okay. In the case of number one, we have our 10 kilogram mass. 
Weight pulls down, and we're sitting on surface. Normal force pushes up, and I don't push the object. If that's the case, the thing's not going to move. It doesn't move. But if I'm not pushing, there is no friction on the object. I don't put any force in, friction doesn't push back on me. Look at any object sitting still around you right now. There's not any, fr if it's on a level surface, there's no friction acting on that object. So let's look at case two. Let's say I push with 40 newtons. What's going to happen then? Our 10 kilogram object has the weight down. It has the normal force up. And I am applying a force of 40 newtons to it. We have a couple options as to what static friction can do. Option one, I'll do these in red. Option one is that static friction pushes back with 60 newtons. Option two is that static friction pushes back with 40 newtons. Now, I know that if I don't push harder than static friction, the thing doesn't move. We're we'll going to write that down. Oh, sorry. Doesn't move. Okay. The object doesn't move, so the acceleration is zero. I am pushing less than static friction. If friction pushed back with 60, I would have a net force in the backwards direction. So that doesn't happen. Static friction only pushes back as hard as it has to. So, um, an object will not move if the applied force is less than static friction. It's not going to happen. Also, static friction will push back only as hard as it has to. Like what happened over here. It will not push back with 60 even though it could. So, what this means is that this block will remain in place until I increase my applied force to something bigger than 60. In fact, what we're going to do and we'll discuss this a little bit more on Monday. What we're going to say is that if I push with 60, static friction is going to be less than 60. 60 is the maximum value. But if I push at 60, it breaks free. And moves. That's going to be confusing. We'll talk about it more um, Monday. But if I push equal to static friction, it breaks free and moves. If I push more than the maximum value of static friction, it obviously breaks free and moves. So we're going to talk about a calculation. So friction depends on a couple things. The first of those things is surface roughness. I have more friction between my tires and the road on a dry day than I do on an icy day because the surfaces are rougher. There's more friction between the two. 
Friction also depends on how hard the surfaces are pressing on one another. If, they, if they're not touching each other very much, I don't have a lot of friction. But if they're really ground into each other, I have a whole lot of friction. So, we know what this is. This is the normal force. So one of the things that friction depends on is the normal force. The other thing, this surface roughness, we're going to... We're not going to invent it, but physicists came up with this idea of the coefficient of friction. Coefficient of friction. This coefficient of friction is a measure of surface roughness. We use a symbol for that. It's the Greek letter mu. It's like a U with a nose. Okay. So surface roughness, we use the coefficient of friction to describe that. Uh, the, the bigger a number mu is, the rougher the surface is. The smaller a number, the smoother the surface is. So, our formula for friction, the force of friction, is equal to mu times the normal force. Which means, if I press down harder between my two surfaces, friction goes up. If they are rougher, friction goes up. Friction is directly proportional to both of these. Now, we can have coefficient of static friction that's for static friction or we could have a coefficient of kinetic friction I'm not writing that again most objects have two if, if if the object's not moving on the surface, we have static friction. It's really settled down into those little cracks a little bit. And if we can get it to move, we're going to have kinetic friction after that. As a rule of thumb, static friction is greater than kinetic friction. If it weren't, we would get something moving and then it would immediately stop because friction would be great. We don't want that. We always want static friction and we always see static friction as stronger, as bigger in magnitude than kinetic friction. So, sorry, I messed up on that. A five kilogram block has a coefficient of static friction of point six newtons, I'm sorry, point six, and a coefficient of kinetic friction equal to point, we'll just say half that, point three. How hard to move? How hard do I have to push before this object moves? Well, let's look at it. We have a five kilogram object. It's got weight that's equal to 50 newtons and a normal force from the surface that it's sitting on. I want to know how hard I have to push to get it to break free. And I'm pushing up against static friction. Okay. Static friction is going to be equal to mu times my normal force. Now, the block is not jumping off of the table, so the acceleration in this y direction is zero. That means that the normal force and the weight have to equal each other this time. So my normal force is 50 newtons. That's telling me how hard the block is being pressed up against the surface. So my maximum force of static friction is 0.6 times 50 newtons. 0.6 times 50 is 30 newtons. The biggest that static friction can be is 30 newtons. And we just said on the other page that if we push equal to the biggest of static friction, we make it move. 
So in order to make this block move, I have to push with at least 30 newtons of force. The next thing we're going to ask is, what is the acceleration if our force is equal to, let's say, 40 newtons? So the next thing, what is the acceleration if I push with 40 newtons? Okay, if I push with 40 newtons, that's bigger than my maximum force of static friction. So we have 50 newtons down, 50 newtons up. And the block is going to move, in fact. So we have kinetic friction. And that's equal to um, our coefficient of kinetic friction, 0.3 times our 50 newtons. So the force of kinetic friction is going to be 15 newtons. I'm pushing with 40 newtons. Oh, we already said that was 50. Sorry. So if we redraw that block, and I'll do it in a different color. If we redraw that block, I have a 5 kilogram block. Those two forces cancel out. And I have 15 pushing back, 40 pushing forward. Well, I end up with 40 minus 15, 35 newtons pushing forward. So the acceleration here is going to be 35 newtons divided by 5 kilograms, 7 meters per second squared. We will do a couple of more things with friction, but these are the basics.